Hey guys, hey ladies, hey friends, hey foes. We just wanted to take a second to remind you that while we're okay swearing when little ears are listening, you might not be, and that's okay. So here's your chance to pause us and wait for nap time, or pop in your earbuds. We hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back to another episode of Dead Playing by the Rules. Um, this is also going to be a fun episode because it's going to be another one where we didn't prep at all and we're just live retelling our lives as they happen. So I'm Janelle. And I'm Jenna. So Jenna, and we've talked about this in a million episodes, so spoiler alert, uh, Jenna has been to couples therapy once or twice in her day. What? What? And Josh and I had our first couples therapy appointment last night. Um, oh, wait, this was your first ever? Ever. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. I assumed it was like your first since moving. No first ever, Jenna. That's why I said it has to be a podcast. This is like, <sighs> I was so nervous going into it. It was so awkward. Okay, so we did it on Zoom. And I don't know if there's anything more awkward than sitting next to your spouse for 10 minutes, watching a screen, waiting for a Zoom call to start not knowing who is going to be on the other end, what it's going to be like. Josh has never done any sort of marriage therapy. I don't, I've never done any marriage therapy. We had no idea what it was going to entail, but we both had to fill out this super long questionnaire before. Really? Like what? Yeah. Like ask. I should have brought it. Oh my God. It was so good. It was like such deep delving, like crazy questions. Um, if you could change three things about the way you interact with your partner, what would they be? And like all of these like super diabolical questions that I'm sure like rate on some chart somewhere that make me look like an a-hole. So we sat there and like stared at the computer screen for 10 minutes <laughs> and stared at each other. Josh was just staring straight forward and I was like, this is so fucking awkward. Okay, but you guys have gone in person. Is it that awkward in person when you wait? Yeah, it's really awkward. And it's so awkward. I'm not, I, don't, like... I don't feel awkward ever. And I felt so awkward. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Especially because I feel like the whole time they're like judging your interaction. And there was they one are. time. She told me they were. Oh, shit. <laughs> there was one time when we got into up. like an argument in the waiting room. And I was like, we have to whisper. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You can't say it out loud because then, yeah. So Whisper what you just said to me. Our first therapist even told us that he kind of can tell how people are based on like where they sit and how they Mm -hmm. like enter the room together and all of this stuff. So I thought that was interesting. It's so, it's my very favorite thing in the whole world, but she didn't tell us any of this until like the end. And she was like, very like, Ha, ha. And we like told mm-hmm. her all of our like little issues. And then at the end, she was like, So just so you know, this is how I operate. I'm not a sugar coater, and both of you are totally holding back right now. And I was like, Oh, she called you out. And I was like, I love that because you know, there's nothing I like yes. better than like inquisitive people and people that'll tell me like straight up. And Josh responds very well to that also. Josh is like, oh, good. She's going to sit there and listen to us talk the whole time. I am leaving. Like, And isn't that and- so awkward when they just like, uh-huh. And you're like, well, I don't have anything else to say. And you're like, well, uh. And- but I've done therapy <laughs> enough that I know that their job is to do the silence. And so I'll just sit there. But Josh Ooh. doesn't know. And so Josh just keeps talking. Yeah. <laughs> so we sat there and it was. Okay, so it starts and she like does this like real, I have a very low patience for like introductory stuff. I don't like it. My ADHD Mm -hmm. like just was like all over the place. And I was like, let's get to the meaty part. Yeah. She's like, so my history is this, la, 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 which they're supposed to do. And then they have to tell you like all the disclaimers, like Mm -hmm. I am bound by confidentiality. However, this, this, and this, I'm not and whatever. And so I knew all that already. And Josh was like, okay. And then she, I don't remember the first question she asked us, but Whatever it was, Josh was instantly angry. And I think I said, he came out of the gate. And I said to her after he said it, whatever he said, I said, you aren't in the room with him. But just so you know, if you were in the room with him, you could feel his anger right now. And she's like, oh, I can feel it through the computer. But it was complete. I didn't feel like it was one sided at all. Neither of us walked away from it because Josh was like, I assumed it would be like, and just like Brandon said on the mental health Mm -hmm. episode, 
you assume that they're going to like pick a winner and a loser because yeah. that's what all of your mar- – when you're shitty at marital fighting, there's always a winner and a loser. Yeah. The idea yeah. of marriage counseling is for there no longer to be a winner and a loser and for you to join the same like winning team. Yeah. And That's so true. It was we both walked away with like knowing what we needed to work on. I'm fully open to discussing any of these that you have questions for. You know, there's no like secrets here. And she was like, and I said, I'm a horrendous communicator. I don't. There was at one point in the conversation that I was like divulging very vulnerable feelings. Mm-hmm. And Josh said something really short and like kind of cut me off. And I was like, so see. He asks me to communicate all the time, but very frequently he will just cut in and say something like that. And she was like, yeah, Josh, I don't know if you noticed, but I saw Janelle's entire body language like shift. Mm -hmm. She was sharing and she was being vulnerable with you and you just shut it down. And I was like, and he wants me to talk to him. And that's why I don't talk to him because the chance that I'm going to get shut down like that is very high. And I am not in, I'm not in for the risk of it, but I'm a, notoriously bad communicator anyways so yeah. I have a lot to learn and so she uses two methods one of them is the Gottman's method which I was just researching this morning and haven't had a ton of time to research but it's basically like communication based kind of like experiments almost in real time so she'll okay. be like giving us home like you, homework and then yeah. we tell her like this didn't work at all or it worked great and she's like I need you to be very honest with me and be like this worked shit for us or this worked great for us. That one made me anxious because I hate communicating. And she was like, I'm going to teach you how to use words like my feelings are hurt. And I was like, oh, I'm already sweating. Like, <laughs> I can't say my feelings are hurt. And then she was telling Josh that she's going to teach him how to like recognize his feelings. And he was like, I don't like that either. And she was like, well, those are the two yeah. cornerstones of like healthy marriage. And we both are very adverse to them. So I was like, all right, so we're signing up for every single week. <laughs> which I think we should just do it until we die, to be honest. So. Yeah. So here's my bag of questions because I've I'm already ready. got a few. I so know, first I'm of all, one. why did y'all go? Was there a breaking point or was there Good like question. a boiling over point or what? So we, as everyone who's listened to this knows and you, but recap, before the pandemic, Josh traveled 90% of the time. So then the pandemic happened. He was home for 365 days. I personally felt, and he doesn't like when I diagnose him, I felt like he was dealing with some depression and he has no drinking problem, but he was drinking more than normal, which I felt like was weird because he had never even like drank around me before, which his rationale to that was like, well, I used to go and entertain and get to like have cocktails all the time. And now Mm. like I'm just sitting at home for a year, but neither here nor there but I feel like he was dealing with some depression then we moved from Richmond Virginia to Chicago and my understanding on the move here was that my husband was going to be working a nine to five Monday to Friday Mm -hmm. and unfortunately I misinterpreted that apparently because he is now working someday often 14 hours a day often six days a week that was Saturdays were never part of the deal and he's growing a company and so there was a time last month that we got in like three fights in like three days and we were just Mm -hmm. at each other's throats and he was saying like a lot of like dumb stuff like really he's not a domineering husband but Mm -hmm. he was saying domineering things and that is like my trigger like my dad never told me what to do. You will not tell yeah, me what to do. I can't no one that. will ever. Yeah. yeah, I know you can't hear. Yeah, no. Um, and like they were little things and he was saying like, oh, I thought I was joking. Like he was in the pantry one day and I was like, we're going to go look at puppies today. And he was like, <laughs> if you, I think I told you this, if you want to get a puppy, what did he say? God, it was so goddamn rude. If you want to get a puppy, you need to get your own job in your own house. Oh, shit. And I was like, ding, Like ding. very out of character for him. So out of character for him and also like so degrading. Yeah. And also you don't get to make the money to sit. Like it was like 15 levels of things mm-hmm. that don't happen. Like you're not the boss of me. You're not the boss of this house. Your money is half my money. This house is half mine. Like we make decisions together. And I was kind of like, like, I'm not going to buy a puppy without asking your permission. Right. And I was made, and he was like, oh, I was just joking. And I was like, that's not a fucking funny joke. Right. And so then we got in like a big, like scream, nah, screaming, 
loud yelling, argument heated. about it. Yeah. Heated argument. And, it, and then honestly, it, was, it pisses me off because my husband will do this too. He'll be like, I was just joking. He like, said he it was, to the therapist last night. And she was like, that's not a joke. Yeah. Like it's like, <laughs> it's almost like they push our buttons. And then when they see us boil over, they use that as an excuse. It, it's gas. And I'm always like, like, you I'm always like shut. I, I will literally say shut up right now. <laughs> and leave the room because it pisses yes. me off so much. Like I was like, that's, that's not, not joking. A joke. How that's not joke. And every time my kids will say it now too. Like, I, but they don't mm-hmm. hear us ever have these arguments. But like, I was just kidding. No, you weren't. No, Mm-mm. you don't get to say I was yeah. just kidding because you said something super fucking mean. Right. That's not just how. Own it. Oh, I said yeah. something so mean. Like then you have to say, oh my god, I'm sorry. Like I'll say stuff to Josh and he'll be like, that's really fucking mean, and I'll be like. <gasps> I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to come across as mean. I thought this was a more playful in nature conversation. And that sounded super cunty. You're right. Like, <laughs> I fully own it. I'm never like, I was just joshing you, big guy. Like, right? <laughs> not, oh, that's not what it was. But there was like three days in a row where that, it was around that situation. But it was, all the fights weren't around that. And it was just a lot of him kind of, and I said, you're talking, so he's, running companies now are running like 10 businesses 10 stores now and he had started to talk to me like an employee a lot yes and I was like had that very bitch yep I don't work for you and (laughs) and I'm sorry if you got confused somewhere along the way we've just never so we've never had to travel this path together I have always been full-time decision maker I've made every decision I've picked out every house we bought I've we have the same taste in a lot of things so it's not like a big controversy but like when I wanted to lock down during COVID he respected it when I wanted to become a vegan he does what I want when it comes to raising the kids and he always says I completely default to you when it comes to raising the kids and I follow your lead and he Mm -hmm. does but now we are in the same house all the time we're both dominant personalities and I just felt like the way he was speaking to me because we were in each other's business day in and day out was not what I wanted. And I also felt like we were being sidelined to his work and we fight constantly about how much he's on his phone and phones, plural. Mm. And so the I think that's very lot- relatable for a lot of people. Oh my gosh. It's nuts. And he's doing work. Th- okay. So then we were leaving a store this weekend and there was a little book. We were at that cute general store in um, Chicago that Joan Cusack owns. And mm-hmm. there was a book and it was a tiny little book, like the size of my phone. And it said 3,552 things you can do besides looking at your phone. And I held it up to him like joking. Oh. And he goes, none of that shit makes me money though. Oh. And I was like, this is the exact problem. Yeah, yeah. You see your – and the therapist said this to him last night because he was like, I'm leaving a legacy to my kids. I am building a business and I am building a brand that my kids will be able to take over if they want when they grow up. And she goes, mm-hmm. you know, you can have a dual legacy where you leave them your businesses and you leave them with the memories of the world's best dad. Mm-hmm. And Josh was like, well, she, Janelle wanted to marry someone like her dad and her dad worked his ass off his whole life. And I said, yes. My dad was at every single one of my basketball games. He never, he was at every one of my field trips. I never saw him with a cell phone. He paid full attention to the family when he was there. And so Mm -hmm. basically the summation of it all is we just need, which we've talked about in previous episodes, help figuring out how to navigate our new normal because we've never lived in the same house seven days a week. Yeah. And when Josh traveled, he could work from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. because he was in another state and we didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Now he hasn't been able to shift from working 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and putting his phones down when he comes home. So the kids are very confused. And I'm very fucking confused, to be honest. Like, And it's a new job. Like, you have to kind of put your best face forward. I'm sure he feels the pressure on that, too. Yeah, he feels a ton of pressure. And that's what he said to the therapist last night. He's like, I've only been in this new role for 40 days and she needs to cut me some slack. And I was like, yeah. I am cutting you some slack, but I want to get ahead of this and develop healthy patterns. So a year Mm -hmm. from now, we haven't just established this as the status quo because I'm not going to be cool with this in a year. Exactly. I agree with that. And it was a huge issue between my mom and my dad. So I'm really glad to hear that Josh is willing to work on it because my dad would get defensive and say stuff like Josh would. But mm-hmm. then there was no working on it past that. So the fact mm-hmm. that Josh is like willing to work on it, yeah. which brings me to my next question. Was he completely on board when you started this or did you have to like 
coax or persuade or talk about it? Or were you just like, we're doing it. Here's the appointment. I said, basically, he thought I was joking at first. um, But I literally just was like, I found a therapist. So I use and I should be getting paid by psychology, (laughs) psychology (laughs) today.com. Go to marriage therapist in your area, then find who takes your insurance, then make sure they will do zoom calls. Then we booked, (laughs) I wanted to find somebody that could do nights and weekends. So we put the kids to bed and then did our marriage therapy. And it was rad. Like we didn't have to go anywhere, but it was still, it was like awkward because I like to be in a room with people because I can read people's body Mm -hmm. language really well, but it's probably better because I can read people's body language and then assimilate to what I think they want from me, which was my big thing. I was like, Josh doesn't, the therapist and I were talking, Josh cares none about what people think about him. And I care a lot. So true. He cares none. Like he didn't even care if the therapist liked him last night. God forbid a therapist not like me. I would be crushed. And I told him after we had those like three days of bad fighting, I was like, we have to get on the same fucking page. Like uh, my communication fucking sucks. Your work-life balance sucks even bigger. And Mm -hmm. we need someone to step in and help us. That is a neutral party. And so he was like, ha ha ha, sounds good. And then I sent him the text and was like, I need you to fill out this paperwork. And he was like, what's this for? And I was like, our marriage, I think I, because we talked about this in another podcast, our marriage helper, I think I called her. (laughs) Our marriage fairy. He was, but Josh is cool like that. Like he was like, okay, that's what you want to do. But he told me he was hesitant about it after the call last night because I had set him up with a therapist when we were in Richmond and he was Zooming with that person during the pandemic. And he was like, he did three sessions with a guy on Zoom in Richmond. And he was like, that guy was such a tool. Like he literally Mm -hmm. didn't talk to me. He just sat there and stared at me. And he's like, if you were signing me up for that again, I was not on board. And he was Mm -hmm. like, he was so happy when this lady was like, I'm not going to pussyfoot around. So he was totally on board. And Josh is always on board to try weird shit with me. But I did have to take all the action steps myself Mm -hmm. and deal I felt kind of like embarrassed when he thought I was joking to be like no I'm dead ass serious I felt like for a second like oh I'm overreacting I should cancel this but he was on board and he wasn't on board when the session started because he was being a huge dick but by the end he was like oh yeah we totally need this So what would you have done if he was like, oh, I'm not going. That's ridiculous. We don't, don't need that. No. What would you, okay, that's a good question. Cause I what would you do? I literally don't know what I would so, I don't know what I would do. I think I would say, because I can be stubborn, I would say, well, I'm keeping the appointment and I'm Smart. gonna show up. If you show up with me, that's up to you. If not, then I'll just have a marriage counseling appointment by myself. Like that's honestly but that's really very smart. my personality. But that's honestly smart. And she said to us last night, she was telling us like the cancellation policy. And I was like, okay, well, if one of us can't make it, can the other one just come? Like, I don't think there should, is there a rule that you can't go to marriage therapy just by yourself? Obviously it's more beneficial with your partner, Mm -hmm. but like I'll show up by myself. She she was like, oh no, that's fine. But you know, that's because she already has an established relationship with us. I don't know what her situation would be. I mean, marriage therapists are usually both like single Mm -hmm. therapist and marriage. So I can't see that she would be like, no, thank you. And you're going to still work on your marriage. Work on my marriage. I'm not going to go there and be like, my pedicurist isn't being nice (laughs) to me. Like I'm going to be like, guess what Josh did today? How can I be less of a bitch about this, this, and this? Exactly. Or my husband didn't show up to our first session. What do you advise I do from here? Oh yeah. Okay. So that's, that's should be our call to action. So if your husband says, I'm not going to go and you make the appointment, then you say, well, I'm still going to go. And then you say to the therapist, my husband refused to show up. What can I do? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I feel like with most husbands, most people in general, we're naturally people pleasers, even though I'm trying to get away from that. I think (laughs) that we would all care even though we don't know this person, what they think about us. And so we would, most people would end up showing up. So afterwards, did you and Josh feel like you had a big talk or was it like you needed to compress? That's what I was most nervous about. Or what? Okay, that's what I was most nervous about. And I almost emailed the therapist ahead of time to say, what is the protocol after this is over? (laughs) Because my brain thinks that you should not talk about it after. Like you should Mm -hmm. put it in a box and put it away. But it was actually like perfectly nice. And he was like, I'm glad that she's not going to pussyfoot around stuff. And she said she's going to be straight up and she doesn't sugarcoat stuff. And I said, I 
was like kind of like being I like to be self deprecating when I feel awkward. And I was like, I'm totally going to be the loser here because she's sending over which I wonder if she sent over yet, but she was going to send over like a video, which I can probably share unless she like made it. But it's Mm -hmm. about it's called the four horsemen. And I guess it's very commonly used in marriage therapy. And it's when one of the four horsemen enters your marriage, you know that your fight is going to end explosively. So if you can catch she says like if you can catch the four horsemen riding in Mm -hmm. and stop that fight, there is a zero percent chance that that fight ends in a way that is beneficial to your marriage. So if you and one of them was contempt, one of them was like name calling. So if Mm -hmm. any of these four horsemen ride into your argument, you need to like full stop and say like, we're not doing this right. We need to use our tools because this can't end well. And I was like, oh God, I'm going to be terrible at that. Because when she was like listing off some of the um, like subcategories of one of them, I was like, that's literally my entire fighting style is like kill or be killed. And that Mm -hmm. is not healthy. Yeah. But when we came off the call, that was what I was most anxious about is like, how is this going to feel after we get up this phone call? Because I didn't like sugarcoat anything. When Josh got angry, I was like, look at this is how this conversation goes every time. And Mm -hmm. Josh was not holding back either. He was like, the way she's speaking calmly to you now is not the way she speaks to me when we're in an argument. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's that's absolutely true. Like, I'm not screaming at the therapist. And so I was like, when I'm going to fail at this. And he was like, which Josh is great at. And he said, look at you still trying to figure out who's going to win and who's going to mm-hmm. lose. Like he's exactly. like, this is literally what we're in this therapy for is because you yeah. think there needs to be a winner and loser of therapy. Even. Oh, I do too. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> why I'm are we clearly like one of your most not fucked up patients, but I have a long history, like to the point yeah. to where my history is usually two sessions. That's what and I said to Josh. I was like, it could be two sessions yes. of just our history. And then, and that's not even like our marriage. That's just like my personal mm-hmm. history. And then Jenna's so I'm like, just right? So I'm like, t- at this point, I'm like, I'm so much of a shit show most of the time that yeah. I just want to win at being the worst. Honestly. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It really it's is. It's just, it's a, so. it's a safety mechanism to just try to win at being the worst. Yeah. I do it too sometimes. I'm like, I'm way more fucked up than you. Like, so <laughs> speaking of history, so that. That's one of my reasons I do not like finding a new therapist because one, it takes forever for me to bring up my history and two, the emotional toll of bringing it up rides me for days. I even feel like after those initial sessions, even though I'm like, I'm going to make this as short and sweet as possible, like let them ask questions because there's so much to it that I feel like afterwards, I'm always like, I still don't feel like they got a full picture of me and my life. And so how much of your history with couples therapy, like personal history, did you have to bring to it? Was she asking for like individual? Okay. She, and I loved that because I was like, just so you know, this might take two sessions of her finding out about, I mean, I Mm -hmm. just think it's so relevant. The family dynamic you come from, from your, your family of origin. She didn't Mm -hmm. ask any of it, but we both said like, just so you know, like we both come from like multi-divorce. Well, my parents divorced once and stayed best friends, but like neither of us has a super healthy role model for marriage. And Josh was like, well, and I was like, what do you mean? Well, neither of us does. (laughs) and such a good what do you mean well like he tries to (laughs) like give a feeling and I'm like no no Um, but she has zero of our like history she wanted to literally just hear I think because she took so much of it in in our pre-paperwork yeah um, the questions were so good and so probing that I feel like she doesn't even feel like our family. I think she's trying to put out the most dangerous fires first. And I think she does. I think she feels the way we communicate, which is poor beyond belief. And she straight up told us, I can tell you're both holding back. I think she feels like our communication within our little family is so much more important than our history right now. That that I think we'll circle back to that. But I was so thrilled, like you said, every time I get a new therapist... I feel so depleted and so Mm -hmm. sick for two days once I've told my entire life story that I was thrilled to not have that hangover. (laughs) Because I mean, I've shared my parents' grief story, but like I mentioned on the podcast, I could go on and on because especially with my dad's, there was more to it. And then that didn't even get into like the divorce and childhood and all that stuff. And I'm like, this is 
fucking ridiculously Bananas. long and I can't. And so that's good to know. Cause I think when we went, you know, we went when we first got married and the only baggage we really had was that my parents got divorced and yeah, we were trying, this is when we were trying to figure out what was going on with Brandon. Like he was going to AA, but wasn't completely committed. So those, I mean, and those are big issues, Yeah, but nothing compared to what we bring now. And when we went to our last therapist who ended up not being a great match, a lot of it did have to surround around the fact that I changed a lot after I lost my parents Mm -hmm. and I stopped putting up with bullshit and giving a fuck about everyone and everyone's problems. And me not putting up with bullshit, I had to like kind of explain where that came from. It even went into our marriage because when my husband would start to talk to me like an employee or give me what I call blanket answers just to pass whatever conversation was going on, I would just fucking lose it. I was also like, I have no one to talk to. And the only person I'm talking to is not communicating right. And so I feel like there was so much grief intertwined into that Yeah. versus now I feel like it's a lot of us trying to figure out our new normal. So that's really comforting to know that I can do little and I wonder if snippets. you could. I wonder if you could ask them when you book the appointment, because we emailed back and forth a little bit before, if you could say, I'd appreciate if we could not begin with my entire history. And this right. is for listeners. Like, I feel like you could feel comfortable in saying, you're paying for a service that they are going to provide. So if you're not comfortable, if you don't feel like going down the rabbit hole of shitty McShitters Mm -hmm. life story, just say like, hey, we're really struggling with communication within our marriage and I'd like to Mm -hmm. focus on that first. And then if you feel it's relevant later on down the line, we'd love to circle back to like our parental issues. That makes sense. And I think that was part of why we didn't fully get along with the last therapist. There was a lot of other little issues, but one, she was bad at communication. Like getting an appointment was really hard and getting her to call us back. And I'm like, hey, I'm in therapy for communication issues. Don't you think you should communicate? This is very (laughs) triggering to me. Right? But a lot of it, she just kept saying, well, grief, da, 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 and kept harping on that. And I wanted to be like, no, this is the good thing that came out of my grief. I don't think you're understanding. Like, I'm glad I don't put up with bullshit anymore. I'm done with that. And to me, that's a positive. And she just kept saying like, you're still grieving and all this stuff. And I was like, no, like I'm just completely a different person. And so, yeah, I just feel like that's really comforting. Well, yeah. And for me to, like you said, for me to say that Josh is the problem over this last year and a half, like my dad died six months before the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. I was still, I'm still, I will grieve for the rest of my life. I am still technically, you're still technically in early grieving. I think the first five years is early grieving. I am 18 months out or whatever of my dad passing. And Mm -hmm. to say that Josh is the problem, like living with someone who is so desperately depressed that they can't even function Mm -hmm. would make me depressed. And then all of our whole lives kind of came apart at the same time. You know, the pandemic happened and then Josh transferred jobs and then we had to quit building on our dream house. Like a lot mm-hmm. happened to both of us over this last year. And to say that Josh is a different person. Oh my God, I'm a completely fucking different person since losing yeah. my dad. Like completely. And not to mention, like, I feel like when you hit your thirties, you're so much different if you got married in your twenties than when you were in your twenties. <sighs> I was married when I was 30, I think, and I'm still completely different. I'm a (laughs) full witch now, and I was a blonde, sweet, lovely, conservative girl, (laughs) and now I am at marches screaming at people. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So do you think it was a good match so far? I think it was a great match. Well, I wasn't at first, so give them the full hour. The first 45 minutes, hopefully she never listens to this, I was like, this fucking granny is not going to be able to keep up with us. Like, I didn't feel like I could swear. I need to be able to swear to communicate properly. She was so sweet and so nice. And she was telling us about her nice little family and her and her husband, her high school sweethearts. And I was like, "Mm, she ain't going to be able to hack this. But at the end when she was like, just so you know, I don't sugarcoat things. You two are holding back. We're going to dig really deep into this. It's going to get really uncomfortable. You might get mad at me. And I was like, Yes, bring you it are for us. The last five minutes, she brought it home. And she basically, I think, was trying to, I, I really feel like she was trying to kind of just be a house plant and mm-hmm. see how, because she was fully analyzing. She would, she would go back in her notes and be like, Josh, when you said this 10 minutes ago, Janelle's body language changed. And I was like, mm. oh shit, she was full on like security system watching yeah. us. Even on Zoom, so that's I'm, impressive. 
I know. And my computer wouldn't work. So we were on my phone and we were both like this. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot going on. So I think she's going to be a great match. But as we always say, mm-hmm. if they aren't a great match, thank you. Next. Thank yes. you. Next. Keep going. Yep. And How many nothing have personal. therapists like, have we'll you guys that. gotten through? Let's see. So we had our first couples therapy and he was good, but he like dismissed us. I had a cured? few therapists basically. And I was like, no, I want this as like a mental health Bless check-in. You. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we kind of continued on our way. We moved, we did all of that stuff. Then parents die. And then I was just going to personal therapy. And then we tried one before the pandemic hit and we kindly let her go. So kindly parted ways. So we have only done two. One was a great match. I just, and I even told my current therapist, I don't ever want to be dismissed. If I'm done with no. therapy, I want to tell you that, but I don't ever want to be done. If I, I would feel say, so weird if someone told me like, you're good to go. I'd be like, you're not good at yeah. your job. And I they basically be just, to go. I've had a few therapists, like even personal. And I don't know if it's because I, and I don't want to say I put on a good front, but a lot of the times I think therapy mm-hmm. is comforting to me. And so I go in in a good mood and I leave in a yeah. good mood. Yeah. But I feel feel like I still need that to get me through the week. And so I told her also, my current therapist, I was like, when I say I need more, I want you to be willing to give me that. And she was like, absolutely. Yeah. I always want a therapist that if I say I need two days a week, like you're Mm -hmm. on board for two days a week and you don't think, you don't look at me like I'm nuts. Like, yeah. Or just say, no, that's not what you need. Like we know. Oh yeah. But like, we're not gonna, I want you to be here for the long haul if I need the long haul. I agree. Two more questions that I thought of. One, how did she start this session? Was she like, what do you guys want to work on? How did she start it? You know, every therapist, you have to understand every therapist has to like by law go over the like principles of like everything is confidential. However, like if you say you're going to go murder someone, I have to tell the police. Um, (laughs) They go through that little spiel if you've never been to therapy before, how all their policies work, this, that, and the other thing. And then I'm trying to think of what her first question was. I should have made Josh come up here and tell me. I think it was what precipitated you making this appointment? Yeah. And that's what I was going to get to because I feel like they do ask that even in personal therapy. And sometimes I forget to mentally prepare for that. And a lot of times my answer is just like, shit has hit the fan and I can't even pinpoint it right now because we're not currently in an argument, but I just know that things have been bad. Oh and- yeah. That's what she asked. And that was a really well done question is she said, what happened in the days leading up to you booking this initial, you seeking me out that caused okay. you to, t- to, that told you this was the time we need therapy. Oh, nice. And I was like, fuck yeah, because now I have to go yeah. back. My head has to go back to that place to remember why I got on that computer and what I was feeling mm-hmm. in that moment while I was typing in psychology today, marriage therapist. Right. And so I was vi- I was transported to that place. And that was okay. super fucking helpful. That really is she in Chicago? Yeah, she actually lives in our same town, we figured out, but she practices Ooh. like 30 miles. 30 Wait, miles did you away. like creep on her? No, she told us. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't creep on people, Jenna. You know, that's not my specialty. I don't know. I well, Josh do. does. Josh is a super creep, but he didn't even know and her name because he didn't fill out he didn't fill out his paperwork on time yeah. even, so he didn't know her name. So did she give you homework this first time? So she's going to send us two things and I'll forward mm-hmm. them to you, Jenna, and see if she'll let okay, me share hey. them. But it's the video of the four horsemen and then right. some information on the Gottman method, which is what she practices, which you can just Google if you want to know about it. And she wants us to just look it over and talk about the things in it, which anything that has to do with sharing feelings. Like she said okay. to me, my New Year's resolution this year was that where we're going to say, I could really use help with X. Would you mind helping me with that and that even Mm -hmm. just saying that makes me so uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and so I know that her like feelings work is going to be so hard for me and I'm going to fake it and I'm going to make jokes and I'm going to be an awkward teenage boy and like be like do you hear the one about your mama like I'm she's going to call you out on it and she's going to call my ass out on it so she was like she put us on our cancellation list for next week so if somebody cancels but then we'll see her the following week weekly for a while and she was like I really just want you guys to look over the resources I'm going to email you my email doesn't really work so we'll see where it goes (laughs) I really want you guys to look over these resources and kind of like mull it over and Mm -hmm. like turn it over and think about what you think about all of this and make sure that you feel like this is the kind of work that you think will be beneficial but when she was describing it to us last night I was like fuck yeah that's exactly what we need yeah and I personally which I know it's a preference think homework is in therapy but especially in couples therapy is very very important because how else do you know how to use 
use it. Exactly. And it makes you work on stuff rather than just waiting for that weekly meeting or Zoom call. I loved our first therapist because he gave us a ton of homework and our last couples therapist gave us zero and I was always asking for some and there was just none. So I think it's because Brandon told him no thank you on the homework. Oh no, he loved the homework too. Like our first therapist, we were still in year one of marriage. And so he was doing a lot of like- Were you guys like, in Texas then? Yeah. And he was doing mm. a lot of like trust activities and all this stuff. And Ooh. I was like, oh, we don't need that. No, it was actually really good because it, a lot of the trust activities kind of also go with communication. And so, I mean, even as simple as like one week he had us blindfold each other and walk through a parking lot. First of all, it was <laughs> hilariously <laughs> awkward because we're walking around with like oh bandanas. And we were getting my car serviced and we're like, well, what else are we going to do? I mean, mine as well. Yeah. And it was so hard for me because I wanted to win at it. And I'm like, so I tried to give the best directions. But then when it came to me trusting Brandon, I really struggled. Could you even walk? I would be... I was like shuffling like like I was 90. No. And I could hear like traffic. So that was even scarier. But I was like, I have no reason not to trust him. Like he would never push me into upcoming traffic. I don't like trusting people either. What you just described that it made me anxious. I would not want Josh leading me around without a blindfold because he's not going to tell me if there's a rock in front of me. He's not as observant. We're very hyper vigilant, Mm -hmm. hyper observant. I'm going to warn my kid if the sidewalk flips up, like watch your step. And Josh would not warn me if the sidewalk flips up flipped up. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, he probably did great. I just, it was an interesting one. That's one that I remember that really stood out for me. I know he gave us a lot of other ones, but that's been like nine years. I'm glad it went really well. And I'm proud of you guys for doing it. So now are you doing, we're going to keep going forever. Good. Are you doing doing individual? Yep. Janelle therapy. Josh doesn't have time for Josh therapy. But honestly, Josh doesn't, Josh himself is fine. I have a lot of mental health issues and I need to always be seeing a therapist to make sure I'm the best mom and human being I can Mm -hmm. be. I want to be a good mom and I want to model a good marriage for my children. That is most important to me because I didn't get to see that growing up. Mm -hmm. And what if we can change the cycle? Like people that come from divorced parents have like 75% higher divorce rate than people that come from married parents. So Josh and I do not have the odds in our favor and we need all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. But I agree in terms of not making marriage seem like it's perfect and great because my parents put on that persona Yes. And so when they got divorced, it hit me like a ton of bricks and it's done yeah. a lot to my brother and I's personal relationships with significant others because we have a hard time trusting because mm-hmm. our parents made everything seem perfect and then they get divorced. And we were just like, what the hell? We thought we had the perfect little bubble life and it hit us hard. And so I completely agree that we try to model a great marriage for our kids, but also in terms of healthy disagreements. Yes. Hey, things get hard. Years are hard. Go get help. It, well, you're yeah, not in we, this alone. I used your example today too, because last night Zach got up and I was like, you need to go back to bed. Mom and dad have a computer meeting. And he was like, basically like you guys don't do computer meetings <laughs> together. And I was yeah. like, I'll explain it all to you in the morning. And I was like, what would Jenna do? I'm going to get one of those <laughs> what, what, WWJD bracelets, but it's going to yep. be Jenna instead of Jesus. Um, and so this morning he took a shower and I was like, oh, we forgot about it. And he was at, like, I was drying him off and he was like can you tell me what your meeting was about now and I was like okay so and I was like nope radical honesty we're doing it and I but I I mean I use kid terms and I said exactly you know how you know how mommy goes to a doctor be mommy takes medicine because mommy's brain doesn't make all the chemicals it's supposed to Mm -hmm. mommy talks to a therapist because she wants to be the best mom and friend she can be so she talks Mm -hmm. to someone about her problems that can help her solve them Mm -hmm. so last night mommy and daddy went to a therapist together to help us figure out how to talk more nicely to each other and be better friends to each other. And he was like, okay, what am I having for breakfast? Like I always keep them short and sweet and then move along. (laughs) Yes. And that's perfect. That's what they need to know. My next question is, you said Josh doesn't need like individual therapy. So do you think his drinking is going to be solved or his unhappiness? You said he was a little depressed with couples therapy. Like once you get that figured out, then I think, I mean, honestly, he's one of those people like we've talked about 
about where his depression is because of he has situational depression. Yeah, which is, is very happy. Common. When we were we were living in a little apartment, it was beautiful mm-hmm. and I loved it. But it was a tiny apartment. He's used to traveling. His whole world got shut down, mm-hmm. and he I don't think has had a drink in the house since we moved to Chicago. But right. Josh's depression is was situational, and he is as happy as he's ever been. He's not drinking at home. He's when the world is opening up again. So yeah. he's getting his old life back again. Well, I'm glad to hear and that. Yeah. He's not like me where he's chemically depressed for life. Yeah. I am exactly. chemically depressed for life. He was depressed because his world got fucking rocked last year. Okay. Good. So I'm glad he's like doing better on that. If he ever starts drinking or be misbehaving again, I'll send him to private therapy again. Okay. Just be like, here's your link. You got to be there. At here's your o'clock. link. Um, If you could fill out your paperwork this time, that'd be great because she didn't love that last time. If not, I'll do it for you and you won't like the answers. Yeah, because you had to be. He's like you. He kept he kept saying to the therapist last night, like you saw my paperwork, and I want to be like, I want to see your paperwork. What did you say? Ooh, I can't wait to hear some of these questions on there. I know I I, find them. It was the the best that we've done. I've ever filled out. Ours are has been nothing. Well, not nothing. Our first one had us do a little bit, but the lines were like two little lines, and I was like. Uh, do you have a journal I can write in? Because I know it'd be like answer in three to five sentences. And I was like, yeah, I yes. will. Don't you worry. And then our last therapist, which also should have been a warning, she didn't give us any intake forms. And so it was just like, we booked it. What kind of insurance do you have? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Which is fine. But I also wish that I could have written out some stuff versus spending it's all so that time It's so much better. When you, I felt like going into it, which I really liked. And maybe that's a, a call that we make to our listeners too. If you're looking for a therapist, I want an intake form so I don't waste. I mean, therapy mm. isn't cheap and you shouldn't have to waste two sessions talking about stuff that they could read on a piece of paper for five that's minutes. so true. You can write it out so eloquently. And I felt honestly, once she had both of our paperwork I felt like she already sort of knew us yeah and it felt like she was like a matchmaker and I wanted to be like did our forms were we compatible or not compatible (laughs) because she read the forms and you know she knows the top three things I want to change about myself and the top three things I want to change about Josh and vice versa like that is a really good position for a therapist to come from in my opinion and y'all didn't share those answers with each other Mm -hmm. oh now I want to know you guys need to talk about it yeah he would totally tell me if I asked him I'll ask the therapist if it's allowed to ask him for his Josh has no filter he'd be like here's what I said about you but or even just to know what he said about himself because I think it's very eye-opening to see our how our spouses think yeah. of themselves and, yeah, and that I've was even a big said, part of what we talked about last night too yes and even to Brandon I've said in like therapy or one-on-one when we're having a deep talk like once a year I'll say this this and this and he's like I never even realized that was an issue in our marriage and I'm like but she that's said my that number last one night. issue yeah she was like there's I guarantee there's things that bother Janelle that she's never even said to you and mm-hmm. Josh was like if she doesn't say it to me I can't know and I was like that's how I operate <laughs> you have to figure out my magical Rubik's cube of a brain and right? like no that and that's what I said I'm like my goal coming out of here is to be able to communicate my needs in a way that is not me keeping them inside for a week until I explode. Mm-hmm. I would love if I could just see something happen and say, hey, you know what? This, this, and this is bothering me and it doesn't have to turn into a fight because mm-hmm. I'm using the correct verbiage. Like, yeah, that's I don't awesome. know if I'll ever get there. You will. You'll do it. Ooh, this lady's got to be cut out for us. She's going to retire on the Borgstrom money. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, call your therapist. And take your meds. <laughs> Some medication.